from Trinity Episcopal Cathedral, this is Stations of the Cross, an audio Lenten pilgrimage. The 11th station is led by the Rev. Sarah Fisher, rector at Saints Peter and Paul in Portland. Station 11. Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus is nailed to the cross. As we arrive at the 11th station, I think about the journey that Jesus, his followers, and the cadre of soldiers have been on to get here. Consider the walk, perhaps half a mile, through narrow streets of Jerusalem to the city's edge. Who is there as Jesus takes up his cross, falls, gets up, sees his mother, and has the cross taken off his shoulders by Simon, who is perhaps younger, stronger, or simply less beaten up and better slept than Jesus, who is still there when he falls again, speaks to some women, falls again, and is stripped of his garments. Who is there? Who is going to watch until the very end? His mother, surely, and the other Marys, and any of his disciples who are not cowering in fear that they might be next. Perhaps some onlookers, neighbors out for a walk, local merchants who have seen all of this before. How many of them are paying attention? looking closely at this suffering man. His mother, surely, and perhaps a handful more. Others are likely along for the spectacle of it, without really seeing. They arrive, finally, at Golgotha, the hill where crucifixions have happened before and will happen again. The guards gesture to Simon where to lay the cross. He lays it down, and I like to think that he backs away, unwilling to take his eyes off the cross that is now part of him, the suffering man that is now part of him. Painters from every century have captured this moment when Jesus is nailed to the cross. Consider a painting typical of a certain style of Christian art from the last century. In living color, three soldiers with large mallets hammer foot-long spikes into each of Jesus's two hands at the wrist and into his feet bound together near the bottom of the cross. Blood spurts out in comic book sized droplets. One soldier's hammer is suspended midair. We don't know if it's coming up or about to strike again and drive the spike further through Jesus' bloodied wrist. One of the soldiers is actually looking somewhere else over his shoulder as he hammers. Jesus is nailed to the cross. This is the moment where we might want to look away if we haven't already. Or we might not consciously want to look away, but our gaze might instinctively, reflexively flinch. Like a lot of you, 
I live in a city where many people without houses make their homes in cars or tents or huts constructed out of discarded pallets and tarps. Understandably for people who have nothing, they collect things you or I might throw away. They gather food that others would not eat. Food and garbage pile up outside their tents. Rats visit or make their homes nearby. People who live like that get sick or injured. Their wounds stink and fester, or their bloody bandages pile up outside their tents along with the garbage. When I am out for walks, as I often am, I want to look away from this. I cross to the other side of the street. I tell myself that I am crossing the street to honor the privacy of people who live there on that sidewalk, and perhaps I am. Also, I am looking away from human misery in the same way that I want to look away from the spikes driven into Jesus's hands and feet. I want to look away like the guy in the painting with the hammer who quite likely welcomes whatever distraction has called to him. But in Jesus's crucifixion, we are invited not to look away. This moment invites us to stay with him and to keep our eyes on his suffering. The cross invites us to stand with Mary, with the women, with the other bravest and most heartsick of Jesus's followers. The cross invites us to stand with all who suffer and to not look away. The cross invites us to stand with the families of Breonna Taylor, Kevin Peterson, George Floyd, and too many others and not look away. The cross invites us to stand with the tide of children flocking to our southern border and not look away. The cross invites us to stand with the families of the half a million dead in our country because of the pandemic and to not look away. The cross invites us to stand with those in our own cities who are hungry and left for dead. When we stand with Jesus on the cross, we stand with our siblings who suffer. When we stand with them and don't look away, hope makes its shy way into the midst of suffering. When we do not let the suffering of others drive us scurrying back into a protective shell of comfort or denial, when we are instead able to be present for suffering and not look away, then we will know that the cross has redeemed the world. As we move through our journey to Palm Sunday, Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter, may we travel in holy solidarity with all who suffer including our suffering God who never looks away from us. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world.
A reading from Lamentations. Is it nothing to you all who pass by? Look and see if there be any sorrow like my sorrow. My eyes are spent with weeping. My stomach churns. My bile is poured out on the ground because of the destruction of my people. Because infants and babes faint in the streets of the city. Restore us to yourself, O Lord, that we may be restored. Descending Theology, The Crucifixion, by Mary Carr. To be crucified is first to lie down on a shaved tree, and then to have oafs stretch you out on a crossbar as if for flight. Then thick spikes fix you into place. Once the cross pops up and the pole stob sinks vertically in an earth hole, perhaps at an awkward list, what then can you blame for hurt but your own self's burden? You're not the figurehead on a ship. You're not flying anywhere and no one's coming to hug you. You hang like that a sack of flesh with the hard trinity of nails holding you into place. Thus hung, your ribcage struggles up to breathe until you suffocate, give up the ghost. If God permits this, one wonders how this twirling earth manages to navigate the gravities and star tugs. Or if some less than loving watcher watches us scuttle across the boneyard greens under which worms seethe and the front jaws of beetles eventually clasp toward the flesh of every beloved. The man on the cross under massed thunderheads feels his soul leak away. Then surge. Some windy authority lures him higher till an unseen tear in the sky's membrane is rent and he's streaming light, snatched back, drawn close, so all loneliness ends. They pierce my hands and my feet. They stare and gloat over me.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Stations of the Cross is a production of Trinity Episcopal Cathedral in collaboration with priests from across the Episcopal Diocese of Oregon and is made possible in part through donations by listeners like you. To learn more, visit trinity-episcopal.org give and stay in touch with us on social media at trinitycathpdx. Mm-hmm.